brother. Good morning. Man, it is, uh, you know, it's great to, to wake up in the morning um, and uh, slam doors uh, while everybody else is sleeping, uh, turn on the lights, and leave the door open in the bathroom so that everybody gets awake at 5.30 when I wake up. I apologize to all the guys in my, uh, in my bunk, in my room. Uh, sorry I did all that. My bad. If you are one of those guys that did that in your room, don't do it. Be considerate, right? We're all men, spiritual men of God, right? Considerate of others. But anyway, sorry about that. But it's great to, to wake up in the morning and uh, walk out to a nice crisp morning and, uh, and seeing uh, guys uh, working out together, crunching it, doing the thing. And I said, hey, man, you guys... You're doing a good job. Keep it up. Where's breakfast? That's what I said. Bring on the bacon. Bring on the bacon. That was good bacon. I had too, too much this morning. Um, but walking out, seeing guys working out together, walking outside, uh, seeing guys out there uh, praying, doing prayer walks. Uh, you know, I had the opportunity uh, to come in uh, to this room, and Cortez was already uh, here going over some uh, from Bible studies that he's had, and we had a quiet time together. We prayed together, and then Matt came in, and he was sharing about stuff that he was going through, and we started, we prayed together again. This is a great time. Yeah. It's a great time to just be in brotherhood and fellowship and, and be together uh, as Christian men. And uh, so this uh, morning, we're going to do something a little different. It's, it's been done in some other, other places uh, I've heard. And so with great results. But basically this morning is really just going to be a time of prayer for all of us. And what we're going to do is, uh, you know, the, the, the planning group from the different churches got together and we asked ourselves, hey, what are some big things that we need to pray for for our churches? And three things kind of bubbled up that we wanted to present to, these, to you men to pray for for your church. One of them is faithful families. I'm going to be talking about that. Seeing God move through our families, through all the different generations. Uh, then we're going, to, we're going to be talking about uh, uh, finances, which are a lot of times a great stumbling block uh, to us spiritually. And Greg Newby is going to talk about that. And then we're going to talk about purity. Yeah. Right? Because guys, man, in our nature... We are just so impure. And we've got Chris Snyder from Columbia, and he's going he's gonna to talk to us about that. Um, but, but let me, let me uh, jump into that. I didn't really... Where am I? Okay. Yeah. So, you know, God's vision... Did it move? Yeah. All right. There we go. God's vision for us and uh, is for us to grow through all the generations, right? If you remember Matthew 28, 18, Jesus says, hey, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you know, and teaching them to obey everything. And I am with you to the very end of the age. You know, Jesus was like, hey, he's, I'm giving you a vision of generations and of people that will become disciples. And in Deuteronomy 6, God was saying that as well. He says, starting in verse 1, uh, these are the commands, decrees, and laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing, the Jordan to possess, so that you, your children, and their children after them may, uh, may fear the Lord uh, our God as long as you live by keeping all the decrees and commands that I give you, and so that you may enjoy long life. You know, God brings us into families, and he gives us a vision and a promise of what he wants. And yet, as we look through a lot of the, a lot of the, the studies that people are doing about generations of 
disciples and what's happening with them. You know, George Barna, who leads the Barna Group, is a big research company that does a lot of research uh, on Christian organizations. Uh, and he's an author in Transforming Children into Spiritual Champions and Revolutionary Parenting. He found that millions of parents are unaware of the breadth of spiritual needs their children have. And to quote, he says, of the 51 million children under the age of 18 who live in the United States, more than 40 million of them do not know Jesus Christ as their Savior, which suggests that there are some basic unmet spiritual needs that parents are overlooking. You know, in, a, in, in, in the most recent uh, research that the Barna Group did in 2018, and uh, the, the subject was Gen Z, the culture, beliefs, and motivations shaping the next generation, they did a study of 13 to 18-year-olds, right? And this is 2018. This is not like way back. This is just, this is relevant, real information that is happening today. Generation Z, you know, 59% of students in this age group, they identify as Christians or Catholics, right? You say, 59, that's pretty good. Well, that's down 75% from the, from the generation before them. 75% of older people will identify as Christians or Catholics but only 59% of the kids 13 to 18 do. Man, that's a lot of children. That's a lot of kids that are missing out on the Word of God. 20% say they're atheist and agnostic, which is almost double what the older generation thinks. Only 11% of those older than 18 years old think that they're, uh, they're atheist or agnostic. But 21% of kids do. 14% say they have no religious affiliation. And that's more than the 18 and plus. We've got issues, right? Students in this age group uh, say that, 23% uh, of them say that Christians are hypocrites. Six percent of them, uh, you know, well, I'm sorry, students in this age group also struggle, you know, to reconcile the Bible and science. It just feels like we're losing the battle to pass on our faith to the next generation. Right? It feels like we're losing this battle of taking the things that we believe in and transferring it on to the next generation. Each generation seems to be slipping and slipping and slipping farther away from God. But in our church, that can't be. We can't allow that to happen. You know, and I think about, you know, that, the, the vision that God has about, you know, the, the passing on to the different generations this faith. And I think about my family. Kids, and uh, it did change, right? Okay, so you're seeing all my good kids. You know, I've been married going on five years uh, to Michelle, uh, formerly Scepter, and now Michelle Pope, and she brought three kids into our marriage, and uh, I came with four kids, and uh, all of a sudden we grew. We added two, or two sons-in-laws, and now a grandchild, my my boy Zeke. Um, you know, but then I look at, at, at those, those kids, of those seven children, three of my kids go to church on their own. Two of them are disciples that go to the St. Louis church. One goes to an Iglesia de Cristo in, uh, in, uh, in Houston. Three of, three of my kids don't go to church at all. And one of them, uh, our youngest, um, he goes to church, uh, well, because we make him. 
He goes to church because he's the only one left at home. He got no choice. It's like it's all on him. But I, but I want to confess something to you. I look at that, I look at that, and when I look at my family and I look at my kids and their spiritual um, walk and where they're at, man, I feel like I did a terrible job. You know, uh, Elizabeth, um, who's kind of like my mini-me, uh, she made the decision to be a disciple at 14 years old. And somewhere along the lines at age eight, uh, 18, uh, senior year of high school, uh, she left the church. She came to me and said, you know, Dad, I just, I'm done with church. She had issues in her relationships with uh, her friends in the church. Uh, she had uh, a, a boy that was calling on her that she, that uh, they, they were a little boyfriend and girlfriend for a little while and then they broke up. Um, but I think the thing that resonated with me was when we talked, and she talked about the hypocrisy in the church and the unlovingness in the church. I mean, this is the church that she grew up in. This is the church that raised her. This is the church of aunts and uncles and brothers and sisters that were there that loved her. No doubt that they love her. And yes, you know, a lot of her struggles, I mean, they're her struggles. They're her struggles with God for taking her mom. Their struggles with just her reconciling the world and of her faith. But it hurts because I, all I could think about was, what did I do wrong? Like, God, didn't you say that if I taught my children that they would follow? Would you take up that faith as well? Because I look back at all the stuff that I did, and, and brothers, man, I mean, I'm not perfect, but I'm a great dad. I'm a great dad. I, I had quiet times together, praying together, sitting down, developing a relationship where we could talk. I mean, our, my relationship with my kids is great. And then I thought, man, what did I do? I stink. Like, what is going on? And there's the, there are those of us here that are fathers, that have kids, right? That are feeling the same way that I feel, that have kids that are lost, that have kids that are saved, right? And we love them. But brothers that don't have kids, I don't want you to tune this out. Because God gives us a family in the church. He gives us, all of us, a role in raising the next generation. If you're a single brother, then you've got an example to follow, right? You've got an example to show the next generation. If, you're, if you don't have kids, you have uh, uh, the, the ability to serve families and help take the burden off your brother and sister. There are single parents out there that need men to invest their time in their kids there's a lot of single women out there, a lot of single sisters that don't have a spiritual man to help them with their children. And don't let it be said of our church that we neglected the widows and the orphans. The widows and the orphans. Right? Taking care of them, what did James say? That's true religion. That's, that's where we're, we're, we're going to see our religion blossom. And so, brothers, you know, our focus in this prayer time is going to be about faithful families. Faithful families in all our churches.